ان شاء الله باذن الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وافضل الصلاه والتسليم على سيد المرسلين ابي القاسم الهاشمي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ربنا علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وحكمة وفقها يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اشرح صدورنا بالصلاة على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على السيد السادات وفخر الكائنات أبي القاسم الهاشمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ف last week we had a brief introduction of why it is important to sit in these gatherings and why we should learn about our beloved role model Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's hanged in the kitchen, in the kitchen on the, on the cupboard with a blue ring. Afa. Bismillah. فاللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم. As you know, when you enter into the spectrum of learning about سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, we have to begin with the beginning of the creation itself. It sounds a bit strange. Why do we have to mention the beginning of creation? when we are learning about the final messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we go through a hadith, in the books of hadith, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, something happened in Jannah. Something happened in the gardens of Eden. We'll fast forward after Allah created Sayyidina Adam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for him a spouse. Our beloved mother Eve, Sitna Hawa. When Sayyidina Adam was in Jannah, and I will not begin from the beginning of creation, as we uh, have been taught by our Mashaykh when we learned the seer of Sayyidina Rasulullah, but inshallah, once we get uh, to a, uh, yani, we'll, we'll go past intermediate and into advance. And there's even beyond advance in Sirah. There's even a class which is beyond advance. MashaAllah. Okay. For, we'll fast forward to uh, the time of Sayyidina Adam in the Garden of Eden. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to rejoice in Jannah. Do what you will, ya Adam, <clears throat> in Jannah. But there is one tree. And it grows a certain fruit. And from that tree you are forbidden to eat from it, you and your wife, Eve Hawa. Now this is the first test that human creation ever received from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah has given something but with the condition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made something halal for the first man and his wife but has made one thing haram. Now we have, we can count maybe on our fingers, maybe 10 uh, major sins that we have to abstain from. But in Jannah, and when we say Jannah, it's not the Jannah, Jannah al-Khuld. It's not the everlasting paradise which Allah has hidden for His slaves. It's a garden outside on the outskirts of the gardens of paradise. And as if you are, you are uh, in a waiting bay, which is a, a life in itself, before you enter paradise. And they say that the uh, prophets and messengers are in those levels of heaven. So when we hear the story of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
ascending to the heavens and he met Sayyidina Adam in the first heaven and he met Sayyidina Isa, Jesus, son of Mary and his cousin who is Yahya Mahak, Sayyidina Yahya in the second heaven and the third Prophet Yusuf السلام, Prophet Joseph and in the fourth Sayyidina Idris okay, the Prophet Idris in the fifth who did he meet? Before, yes, Sayyidina Harun. Sorry, I went somewhere else. Aaron, the, bro the brother of Moses. In the sixth heaven, who did he meet? The brother of Harun? Musa. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And in the seventh, who did he meet? The grandfather of all the prophets and messengers after him, Sayyidina Ibrahim al Khalil. Abraham, the close and beloved friend of Allah Azza wa Jal. So when he met those prophets in, in the heavens, it's the outskirts. Yani the uh, uh, Ayluru garden with tents, with, with castles, but it's not the major paradise which after judgment everyone will enter it. Because in that Jannah is no eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard, and no uh, mind has ever imagined. That's hidden for the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until after judgment. For Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was forbidden, uh, was forbidden by Allah azza wa jal to eat from a certain, certain tree. The first test, first exam. Tens of years were passed in paradise. Sayyidina, Ibra Sayyidina Adam and his wife were rejoicing in paradise. Then a time came when Iblis, the devil himself, came to deceive Sayyidina Adam because of the jealousy and enmity of the devil for Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Because Allah preferred humans above any other creation. Even beyond the angels, if you are Muslim and you are a muttaqi and you are a God-fearing Muslim, then your rank is more higher than the angels to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why is that? Because the angels are created on a certain path, not able to uh, uh, lean towards one side of the, the path or to the other, other side. The path that Allah has created for them which is the path of glorifying Allah and worshipping Allah and that's it, that's all they do. They only obey the, the way of Allah. They have no temptation, okay, and so forth. So that's how the Muslim human reaches that rank and at least the devil knew this because he was informed by Allah and he used to listen to the angels when they used to uh, uh, recite some verses from the God tablet. The, the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. For Iblis, the devil now came to, in what form, we don't know. Some scholars say he came in the form of a peacock. You know, the peacock with the nice, uh, amazing uh, uh, tayo of feathers, mashallah, again. And only the males have that. So the males are known to be the most uh, uh, spectacular and handsome species. Forgive us, sisters, inside. <laughs> <laughs> Shaykh Muhammad is happy with that one. For the male peacock has a spectacular tail that it shows off with. It shows off with. It has pride in what Allah gave it. But we are not allowed to show that pride. So some scholars, it came in that form because of the pride of the peacock, that beautiful creation of Allah. Some say it came in the form of a serpent-like, but... A, a very beautiful and wondrous serpent, multicolor. Because there's nothing abhorrent nor ugly in the paradise. And in, uh, in that time, some ulama said it had legs. It didn't slither on, on its stomach just yet. For we'll say he came as a beautiful serpent that climbed the tree. And said the Adam and said the Hawa were underneath that tree. Relaxing, rejoicing, laying back. Okay, maybe Sayyidina Adam was having a siesta and Sayyidina Eve woke him up. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, it's supposed to be a halal joke. But anyway, for the husbands that try to sleep after work 
and mashallah again our wives have chores for us but we say no you know like we don't we don't say amrik we say uh, naam uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad I might get in trouble for this me and my jokes so even our jokes backfire on us for the serpent now started to with, with a beautiful voice some scholars say to tempt and entice Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Hawa for he started to say how wondrous is this tree and the fruits that it produces and from the fruits will be a cause for anyone that eats it to come close to Allah Azza wa Jal to have a closer relationship with Allah whoever eats this now many years have passed and as Allah says in the Quran that Adam forgot forgot the order of Allah that is not allowed to eat from that tree Fanasiya. <coughs> that he forgot Sayyidina Adam. So he did, what he's going to do is not out of rebel, a rebellious act to rebel against Allah Azza wa Jal. This was not the intention. Because he forgot. For he heard uh, 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 the call and the invitation to eat from this tree. For he grabbed this fruit and he took a bite. And then he realized, <clears throat> then he remembered the covenant that he done with Allah and the promise that he gave to Allah that he will not eat from that tree and it is said that he did not even swallow that bite he spat it out but it was too late it was too late for Sayyidina Adam when he was sent to earth him and his wife and the devil himself as a test for mankind and as our enemy and not only he is our enemy, but the followers of the devil are our enemy. That the devil and his atba' and his followers are the enemies of Allah and your enemy. So take the devil and his followers as your enemy. For Sayyidina Adam came down and he regretted what happened. For he want, he's seeking Allah's pardon. And then he came with one praise that was the cause of Allah's pardon upon Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Hawa. And that was a beautiful phrase when he said, Bihaqqi Muhammad, Lima ghafarta li. O Allah, by the right of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have pardoned me and you will pardon me. Had yaqeen certainty, lima, aw lama. Yani it's a certainty, you will forgive me, ya Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, awha, li Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message to Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Wa kayfa aariftu Muhammada wa lam akhliqhu ba'd. How did you know the name of Muhammad and I have not even created him yet? And he said, and this hadith is mentioned in Al-Bayhaqi and the narrator of the hadith is Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu wa arda. He said, Oh Allah, when you fashioned me, when you fashioned me, Yani you designed me a beautiful and perfect design. And you allowed the spirit and the soul to enter my body. And when I came to, when, I, when life entered me, when I first opened my eyes, رَأَيْتُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ أَوْ عَلَى قَوَاعِدِ الْعَرْشِ That I seen on the pillars of the throne, مَكْتُوبًا لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فعرفت أنه أحب الخلق إليك لأن اسمه واسمك واسمك مقرون يعني that I seen أو الله I knew this man or this creation محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
will be the most beloved creature and creation and and man and human to you because I realized after seeing his name and I knew that his name that Sayyidina Adam knew all the names of Allah Azza wa Jal and the names of the angels and the names of uh, uh, what was in paradise and so forth so he knew that his name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam belonged to a human so I knew this name is a created name for a created person and I know your name is not created and it is azali and ma'ak it is eternal with you I know Allah is not created the name is not created so that's how I worked it out so I ask you Allah by him to forgive me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said to Sayyidina Adam Sadaqta ya Adam lawla muhammada Subhanallah if it wasn't for you have spoken the truth ya Adam if it wasn't for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I would not have created you so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was praised in paradise was praised before even the angels were created Allah created the praise of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and created the specialities of Sayyidina Muhammad to be preferred above all specialities and a man that's preferred above all creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, certified this by engraving the name of Sayyidina Muhammad for eternity on the Arsh Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and he beautified the Jannah as one hadith says that Allah has beautified paradise has beautified the trees even the leaves on the trees are beautified by the name Muhammad and on each leaf there's a name of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his nur, his light is even mentioned in the Quran and we derive it as the mention of the birth of the milad of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there's a verse when Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala which means that Allah sees your transitioning within the backs of the prostrating ones Sajidin is plural more than once from Sayyidina Adam all the way to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib Sayyidina Abdullah alayhi radwan Allah Sayyidina uh, Abdullah was one of the Sajidin li wajhillah Allah says we see you being tran transitioned your nur changing from one back of prostrator to another to another and they asked Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu about ma ta'ni hadihi al-aya what does this verse mean ya Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Abbas is who the famous Abdullah ibn Abbas who was he the first cousin of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Abbas is the paternal uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas was uh, blessed by a special supplication from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was at the age of seven years old. Yani when uh, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah was at the age of seven, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed his blessed hand on the blessed chest of Sayyidina Abdullah a seven-year-old Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and he said Allahumma Allahumma allimhu al-Qur'an wa ta'wili three times not a hadith Allahumma allimhu al-kitab wa ta'wili oh Allah teach him the Qur'an and its understanding and its meaning three times he said it to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas and the Prophet makes dua and repeats uh, what he wants for a certain person three times a certainty takes place 
يعني سيرتيتي هي يعني يعني يقينا اتس جونا هابن يعني يعني with certainty this dua will reach this person that the prophet supplicated for ف هي واز نون از ترجمان القران the interpreter of the quran ها ف they ask what does this verse mean that we see the transitioning or we see you transitioning through the loins of the prostrating one and the and sayyidina abdullah said this means that allah has transferred the nur the light of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam from the back of sayyidina adam <coughs> yani <coughs> من صلب نبي إلى صلب نبي حتى حتى أخرجه الله سبحانه وتعالى نبيا. That uh, transitioning from one line of a prophet, يعني the lines where the the, the seed uh, uh, rests before it enters the womb of the mother. So that nur tr- transferred from the prostrating Sayyidina Adam. Prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal. And through all the backs of the prophets and anbiya and the awliya who were not prophets. The salihin. The ones that only prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is how we know that Sayyidina Abdullah is one of the ones that never prostrated to an idol but prostrated only to Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay. And then the nur entered the rahm the womb of Sitna Amina binti Wahab radiallahu anha naam and she used to only pressure to Allah azza wa jal kanat ala din al-hanif she was on the pure religion the pure religion which was passed from Sayyidina Ibrahim all the way through and they sat and they kept it safe for our beloved uh, uh, Sheikh Alim al-Murabbi الشيخ محمد سعيد رمضان البوتي هو يا passing on this uh, beautiful uh, Sira class from his book The Jurisprudence of the Prophetic Biography of the Final Messenger of the Final Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he begins this book is basically giving us snippets of the whole Sira يعني a summary of the summary of the summary of the seerah and it's very easy for us in points but we'll try to elaborate with each point inshallah ta'ala for he began with the lineage of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said with regard to the prophets sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lineage he was known as Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib also known as Shaybat al-Hamd Ibn Hashim Ibn Abdi Manaf whose name was also Al-Mughira Ibn Qusay also known as Zayd Ibn Kilab Ibn Murrah Ibn Ka'ab Ibn Lu'ay Ibn Ghalib Ibn Fihr Ibn Malik Ibn Nadr Ibn Kinana Ibn Khuzaymah ابن المدركة ابن مدركة ابن إلياس ابن مضر ابن نزار ابن معاد ابن عدنان and we said ابن 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 is son of son of son of so we have just mentioned the, the, the lineage of Sayyidina Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم all the way back to our beloved عدنان who was the great, 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 great grandfather of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said Sayyidina Adnan was one of the grandchildren of the Prophet Ismail, Ishmael, the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Wa ala al-anbiya as-salat wa salam. Okay? Yani this name is so praised, Muhammad, that he's praised, Mahmudan fi sama wa ala al-ard. Okay, because he was asked, what did the name in Muhammad? And it was said that, so he can be praised in the heavens and on the earth. Muhammad is, a, is, a, is a derived from the word Hamd, Hamid. Okay, 
that the one who is who is praised Muhammad is praised okay Ahmed is the one that praises Allah Ahmed al Hamidin the greatest uh, praiser that praises Allah of the ones who praise Allah he is the greatest one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he begins and says the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in the year of the elephant that is the year in which abraha and will give us a, a just a brief uh, understanding who is abraha and what he done so abraha al Ashram attempted to storm Mecca and raise the Kaaba, yani destroy the Kaaba. Whereupon God Allah prevented him from succeeding by means of the dazzling sign described in the Quran in Surah 105, Hunad Surah, Surah Al Fil, Alam Tara Kaifa Fa'ala Rabbuka Bi Ashab Al Fil. Okay? which is known as the elephant, the chapter elephant. And on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, on the 12th day of the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. Now, why is this event relevant when it comes to the seerah, to the life of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? As we have just heard, that he was born in the year of the elephant. And where do we get our proof that he's born in the year of the elephant? Okay. So we'll quickly go over this event. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al fil. Alam tara ayya Muhammad. O Muhammad, don't you see what Allah has done to the people of the elephant? Now, how is Sayyidina Muhammad supposed to see? Where was he at that time? He was still in the womb of his mother. So what is that telling us? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled the Prophet sallallahu to have superhuman abilities even though he did not enter the realm of earth. Okay, as if Allah is saying, don't you remember what you're saying whilst you're in the womb of your mother? Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al fil. Allah would have said, Alam ta'lam kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al fil. Allah would have said, don't you know what Allah has done with the people of the of the elephant? Allah said, Alam tara. A, a, a explicit uh, meaning. We said that Sahih Al Bukhari is what one of the most authentic books after the Quran. So whoever is writing notes down, note this down. Sahih Al Bukhari is one of the most reliable sources after the Quran itself. The most reliable source with no uh, doubt with no doubt in its authenticity and its truth and the sayings of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam okay and he said to his companions when they were in Medina okay and you will find this relevant information so you can understand the miracles that took place with the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what happened to him when he was around three days old 90% of the Ummah or 99 won't uh, recognize what we're going to say when he's a three year old, except if they've gone through uh, the whole Bidayu and Nihaya of, uh, of Sirah. Okay? So he said to his companion, Nisahil Bukhari, Hal tarawna qiblati hahuna? He's saying to his companions, Do you see? The direction or my direction of prayer now, do you see? And here it can mean uh, that, uh, do you see me here standing in my prayer place? 
or the one I'll lean towards to is can you see the Kaaba that I'm facing? هَلْ تَرَوْنَ قِبَلَةِ And what's the Qibla? What's the Qibla that we, we face towards to? We don't pray to, we face towards to. What is it? The Kaaba. Where's the Kaaba? In Mecca Al-Mukarrama. Where was the Prophet saying this? In which city, in which town? In Madin al So around how much Sheikh Ahmed, Sheikh Muhammad? 600 kilometers, 400 kilometers away? So it was will say, argument's sake, for argument's sake, 400 kilometers away from Mecca. He was in Medina. And he was saying this to the companions. Okay? هَلْ تَرَوْنَ قِبَلَةِ هَهُنَا Do you see? It's a question. And they couldn't answer. But he said, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا يَخْفَ عَلَيَّ خُشُوعُكُمْ ولا ركوعكم إني لا أراكم من وراء من وراء ظهري that by Allah nothing is hidden from me from your khushu and we mentioned on the Friday khutbah the khushu is a, an emotional state that cannot be seen it's not a physical entity or thing that he sees that, yani he sees what's going on within you. He sees your iman. The khushu, he sees your iman. This is what Allah wants. He sees your iman as you worship Allah. He sees the, uh, uh, the sincerity of your worship. Or he sees the dishonesty of your worship. Yani to, the, to, the, to the hypocrites that were amongst them. For he said that nothing is hidden from me while I'm praying, worshiping Allah. My back is towards you. As I'm praying and you're praying, that I can see your khushu', your hidden emotion going with, you know, roaming around uh, your chest. I can see that. Even though we can't see our, our own khushu'. And he says, I see your bowing, your ruku'ah, yani plus the sujood. That I see this as I'm facing the qibla the, in Makkah. Go back to, هَلْ تَرَوْنَ قِبَلَةِ هَهُنَا So he's saying that in my salah I see you. I see you. So this is the 360 degree vision of Sayyidina Rasulullah. But without being distracted, from what he says in front of him. And Sayyidina Muhammad is a creation. He's limited. He cannot see beyond what Allah does not permit him to see. He does not. And as if he's telling them, I'm here to introduce you to the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this creation, Sayyidina Muhammad is saying to himself, and we're paraphrasing, as if he is saying to them that if I'm a creation with limited sight, limited hearing, then what do you understand about the eternal sight of Allah that has no limit, that has no boundaries, nothing escapes him. Okay? And he knows what's hidden within you and what's hidden within the hidden secrets, which you don't even know. If I have this capability by the will and power of Allah, then what do you think about Allah? Can you escape the sight of Allah? Can you run away or hide from Allah? When you sin towards Allah, when you sin to Allah, Allah knows and sees. When you're good or bad, Allah knows. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet said, there are he things that you can't hear. And I see things that you can't see. That I, I hear, I hear the, the, the creaking or the, or, or, the, or the crackling of the heavens. From the amount of angels that I see in the heavens. He's seeing through seven heavens. So he's seeing through the, uh, beyond the beyond. 
لسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. فسيدنا محمد سين from what we understand from the interpretation of the علماء الكرام from the fasting of the Quran some of them okay, that he's saying the event of the elephant. And when that took place Abraha the Ethiopian king at that time or he was the vizier of the Ethiopian king he, he was uh, uh, he had his kingdom in Yemen and they built a mighty church and then some Arab came in uh, what I say uh, he put uh, filth on, on the walls and he done number two <laughs> he put it on the walls yes it's, but that's what's mentioned in Sirah the Arab this Arab man from Mecca because he goes look they're trying to uh, take away the glory of, of the Kaaba to bring it to Yemen it's not going to happen so he done the Arab out of jealousy the Abraham got very angry for he found out that it was a man from Mecca said you know what I'm gonna get destroyed there on the honored house the Kaaba and in revenge and I'm gonna bring all the pilgrims to Yemen the Hajjaj in that time for as he is marching with his elephants he got to the outskirts of Mecca the outskirts of the Haram and he is still a fair distance away Okay, but as if he can see uh, uh, the Kaabi as a dot from far, and he can see it. Okay, he started to march forward to the point where his elephant was the biggest elephant and was the matriarch at that time, or the patriarch, it was a male. Okay, and he was ordering it to move. He poked the elephant to move forward, it wouldn't move, it stood still. But he turned the elephant to, the, to, the, to his right, the elephant marched, he stopped it. He turned it back and he turned it back again to the Kaaba, it wouldn't move. He turned it to the left, it moved. He turned it back to the Kaaba, it stood still, it wouldn't move. For at that time, he, got, he was about to get off his elephant or he was going to tell his army to march forward, let's go on foot. Then Allah sent Tayran Ababil Tarmihim Bihijaratin Min Sijil Fajalahum Kaasfim Makul. Then Allah sent the, the, the small sparrow like birds. And they had three stones with them, each bird. One in its beak and two in its claws. One right and one left. And they flew towards Abraha and his mighty army at that time and by the will of Allah they released the stones and they were high and by that velocity drop the rocks started to heat up as if they were from the hellfire and they will penetrate through the head and come out the bottom of the army of Abraha to the point that was so hot that it uh, burnt the inside and turned them to dust on the inside that's how hot it is when you burn a paper what does it turn to Ash. And that's how they turned to ash. And then when that happened 50 days after, who was born or about to be born? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to go on or the food will be ready in five minutes? What should we do? Go on. Go on or we'll have, we'll have, we'll have something to eat first? We'll go on? Yeah? Uh, the boys are going to pound me outside. Are you on a go? Inshallah ta'ala. So we'll finish here, inshallah. Okay. Binti Wahab was about to give birth to Sayyidina Muhammad. Yeah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was a time just before Fajr. What time is Fajr? It's too dark, Mark. Okay, it's too dark. The moon is still out. The stars are still out. The sun has even uh, reached the horizon to rise. One of the midwives or two of the mid midwives was with her. And then she began to give birth to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? So, before we mention, okay, we said that the woman 
the mother goes through labor pains, you know, oh, and, and, and so forth, and the husbands know, and the children know if they, wit if they witness the mother uh, uh, going through pregnancy. After she gave birth to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we'll fast forward a few days. The women that gave birth, the young girls, the young women, gave birth, they were saying and talking about the pain that they were going through. The, the labor pains and, 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 and all that. Satna Amina binti Wahab at the age of 16 or 17 years old. Okay? She said, Ajaban, I am amazed about these women's complaints and the pain that they felt through their pregnancy and giving birth. She said, Wallah, by Allah, I did not feel any discomfort when I was holding baby Muhammad. I did not feel any pain when I gave birth to him. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ A verse in the Quran. We have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to mankind. And the merciful one is not the cause of pain. A merciful man does not cause pain to others. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy even within the womb of his mother to the point he was brought as a mercy that Allah saved her. Because of that mercy she was uh, carrying and nurturing in her blessed womb. Allah did not allow any pains to affect her. This is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, I witnessed when he came forth upon the earth, I witnessed a nur, a light emanate from me. That it lit up the room that I was in, from darkness into light, that we can see perfectly and vividly, as if it was a time of duha, and the time of uh, maybe four, three hours after sunrise, the most perfect glow of the sun, is maybe, uh, we'll say in our time, 9 or 10 a.m. Beautiful glow of the sun. That the room illuminated as if it was that time of the day. And it was still before Fajr. And that light allowed me to see something, a vision. And you imagine a screen just came down in front of her. Okay, and she's seen what? She's seen the red colored castles, yeah, and the red like, uh, the clay colored, a beautiful color of the castles of Sham, of the castles in Syria. And I seen so vividly that I seen the camels around that area that I can even see the fur on their necks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought forth what? A vision to her because of what? Because of the light of the nur of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said he was born makhulan, madhunan, makhtunan. He was born as if he had oil on him. He was anointed with a beautiful fragrance. So clean. Now the son irritated by cutting the umbilical cord of Sayyidina Rasulullah. For Allah allowed to be disconnected. And no one can touch the sawah, the, the, the private part of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is sahib al he is he is the owner of shyness that Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha said Wallahi, we did not see the sawah of Sayyidina Rasulullah I'm his wife and the wives not see below the navel and above the nails of Sayyidina Rasulullah this is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was born like this, a perfect birth. And it was said that he looked towards the heavens. And she said that when he looked towards the heavens, she seen his finger move. And it was said that he was given the shahada. And then he was taken to the room because she had a vision at that time. Do not let anyone visit baby Muhammad, leave him in the room 
for three days and three nights and only come to him when he needs to be fed. And we'll leave you at that until next week. Inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma ya nur al-nur wa ya mudabbir al-umur. Balligh anna ruha Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alfa alfa tahayyita wa salama.